Hello and welcome. My name is Shannon Kemp and I'm the Chief Digital Officer of Dataversity. We would like to thank you for joining the latest installment of the monthly Dataversity webinar series, Advanced Analytics with William McKnight. Today, William will be discussing organizational change management. Will it hold back artificial intelligence deployments? Sponsored today by Informatica. Just a couple of points to get us started. Due to the large number of people that attend these sessions, you will be muted during the webinar. For questions, we will be collecting them via the Q&A section. And if you'd like to chat with us or with each other, we certainly encourage you to do so. To open the Q&A panel or the chat panel, you can find those icons in the bottom middle of your screen for those features. And just to know the chat defaults to send to just the panelists, but you may absolutely change that to network with everyone. As always, we will send a follow-up email within two business days containing links to the slides, the recording of the session, and any additional information requested throughout the webinar. Now, let me turn it over to Pretem from Informatica for a brief word from our sponsor. Pretem, hello and welcome. Hey, thanks, Shannon, for having me. And hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Pritam Kumar. I lead the product marketing for data integration portfolio at Informatica. And let me share my screen. Hi, Shannon, can you confirm if you can see my screen? Looks good. Awesome. All right, so thank you very much for having me here again. Uh, so today I'll be talking about a very interesting topic. Uh, I'll be talking about data management for AI, why data management is critical for driving a successful AI or any kind of analytics initiative. And we'll also I would be also be talking how AI is also critical for data management uh, in terms of like how you can scale your overall data engineering, data management, data integration process to drive any analytics and AI initiatives. Okay, so without wasting any more time, I'll just get started. So why is AI important? Uh, because AI gets the most out of the data, whatever data foundation you build in order to get insights, you need to build a strong AI ML model that can get you uh, insights which can help drive businesses and gives competitive edge across all industries. And here are some of the key pointers. Um, there are many advantages of how AI helps, but uh, when, you, when you talk about infusing AI into a data management process, so if you're a data engineer and you're building data pipeline and you automate some of the processes in, in data engineering, some of the repetitive tasks, which can help you increase your overall productivity uh, because you're not doing the mundane task and you can now focus on developing the business logic, which are more productive. Uh, similarly, the data scientists as well, they can focus more on building uh, AIML model rather than preparing or integrating data, which can be automated uh, you, by infusing AI into it. Adds intelligence, you can have features like bots or recommendation engines in, in, uh, in, in which can be embedded in your in your tool that can give recommendations to you about what should be the next step. You can try this kind of data sets, okay, if this particular data set is not working out here. Also, it enables you to analyze uh, different var varieties and velocity uh, and um, um, vari a variety of data from, from coming from various sources. It can be any pattern and any latency, whether it is streaming data, real time, batch data from databases or from application sources or even the files data as well. And AI enables you to give accuracy as well. By building a strong AI ML model, you can get make right decision at the right time, uh, which can help uh, an, a retailer to drive uh, successful offers or in a healthcare sector can improve in driving better patient care with AI. Now to drive successful AI, you need a strong data management foundation. You need high quality, data. If you see in the right hand side, the diagram that shows which I was talking about, you need data for AI, you need a strong, high quality trusted data with with a strong, solid data foundation, you can build a strong modern data architectures like data fabric, data mesh or lake house architectures, which can help in driving a solid data foundation, giving high quality trusted data to your data scientists to build AI ML models. And similarly, by infusing AI into your data engineering and data management process, you can scale your overall data management 
thing. So if your engine, data engineers are building X amount of data integration jobs in a specific time, now they can do more because now they are more productive because they're using AI to drive it. Uh, and if you don't, if there is no AI without trusted data, your, your models can fail. And that can have a very bad and a catastrophic impact across all the industries. As I, you can see some of the examples out here, a chatbots can give you racist tweets because some of the tweets were, uh, were not uh, cleansed um, properly. Uh, you can have a, a bad impact in, in terms of diagnosing uh, patients' uh, diseases uh, with poor models and all. Okay. And also in the legal section as well, it can it can give you with the, with the wrong uh, generative AI models and all. Yeah, it can have a very bad bad impact in decision making, and also the cost part as well. You can see that uh, an average poor cost of poor data quality leads to twelve point eight million dollars of loss per year. So how does Informatica helps? Informatica provides a uh, an intelligent, comprehensive data management solution that can help you ingest data from any source, uh, integrate it, apply data quality rules, monitor it. You can operational. Uh, you can help you build the AI ML models with ML ops capabilities, and also operationalize it okay, to drive any kind of AI ML use cases, and also generative AI use cases like large language models and all. And democratize it for everyone and everywhere. Any user can access it because it's a code free, no code, low code platform uh, with 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 uh, with a proper governance and security uh, solutions as well. And this is driven by a Claire engine, which is our AI powered metadata engine that has drive 35 active uh, petabytes of active metadata driving 61 trillion transactions. So this Claire engine helps in driving recommendations to the data engineers, data analysts, uh, data stewards who are using our platform, automate some of their uh, uh, data engineering or data integration tasks and provides insights to them about the jobs which they are running out here. And we have built uh, we have recently launched a Claire GPT solution, which is a generative AI uh, solutions for data management. And we are infusing it uh, in, 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 in all our data integration, data management, data quality, data governance capability, which can help drive uh, your proper data management uh, in a very efficient, easy, efficient, and cost-effective manner with capabilities like FinOps and all, where you can estimate the cost uh, of running the job um, uh, and how much will it cost, which which engine to select for running your job. And that can help you drive strong data foundation for driving, for building large language models, operationalizing it, and for driving your generative AI application for all consumers. So with that, uh, there are a few additional resources. With this, I want to end wherein uh, we have some analyst paper which talks about our autonomous data management capabilities that bridges the gap between the supply and demand of data. We have some interesting blogs about uh, how the power of AI uh, uh, with data management, you can drive it with the proper data management and also generative AI as well. So watch out for, we'll be uh, announcing few new, new features every month uh, in this space. And yeah, feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for your time. And uh, back to you, Shannon. Preetan, thank you so much. And thanks to Informatica for sponsoring this month's webinar. If you have questions for Preetan, if you have questions about Informatica, feel free to submit the questions in the Q&A section of your screen, as he'll be joining us in the Q&A at the end of the webinar. Now let me introduce to you our speaker for the series, William McKnight. William has advised many of the world's best known organizations. His strategies form information management plan for leading companies in numerous industries. He is a prolific author and a popular keynote speaker and trainer. He has performed dozens of benchmarks on leading database, data lake, streaming, and data integration products. And with that, I'll give the floor to William to get his presentation started. Hello and welcome. Hello and thank you, Shannon. I trust everybody can hear me. Uh, and thank you, Pretam. Those slides were looking really sharp and you got us all excited about artificial intelligence and I want to help us along that path and talk about something that can get in the way if we, if we allow it to. And that's the changes that we're making to the organization. 
So welcome to the 45th episode of Dataversity Advanced Analytics, Organizational Change Management. Will it hold back artificial intelligence deployments? We meet here every month on the second Thursday at this time. And I am currently developing my topics for next year. So if you want to hear something that's in my uh, sphere of data management, broadly speaking, let me know. Maybe it'll be a topic that I can get into our sessions here next year. Now, generative AI, especially generative AI, it's expected to be, and I expect it to be a gold rush in 2024. This is how I've been talking about it. And uh, I, I think things have, things were hit or miss this year, I think with IT budgets and even budgets for AI. Some organizations spent a lot of money on it. And I think it was well spent. I think they got ahead of the game by doing that, but other organizations were really feeling the pinch. But next year, I think we're all gonna see a lot more in those budgets and a lot more for AI. So let's talk about making sure that what we do around AI is successful. Rapid change is coming to the enterprise and we we in technology, okay, we're the cause of it. There are hundreds of companies that will be built around an API for something like ChatGPT, an LLM. Um, I look at, I must look at a dozen new AI companies a week uh, these days. And uh, there is so much going on in this area. This technology, I think, is a real, a real keeper. And so we have to take it uh, seriously. Startups will not be able to create the AI themselves. That's left to a few, but they can use the API. So essentially, they are AI startups. Nearly every industry, nearly every vertical is being transformed today. Some fast and some slow, but every industry is being transformed by AI. Companies are using these techniques and software offering statistical models to make predictions, drive business. Yeah, we know what AI can do. And Pre-Tam talked a little bit about that. Many enterprises are starting to use the tools of AI. And some of them I'll call, they're using the, I'll call it, they're using them accidentally. Um, maybe not with a holistic plan in mind, but others are forging that plan. And so I want to be sure that when you do that, and even when you just run accidental projects, uh, with AI that you are including a healthy dose of organizational change management. So I want to get to what that's going to look like. But first, let me talk about enterprise change a little bit more because it's coming in a big way. And um, there's, I don't think we're very well prepared for all the change that is coming, even you and I, let alone our user community and those of uh, those that are in our the business areas of our business. Look at these changes. Quantum computing, and that's about to hit. And look into this if you haven't. I think the next generation is going to be of, of tools is going to be using quantum computing with qubits. This, that could be any proportion of both one and zero states at once. We've seen uh, exponential speed up and all calculations happening at the same time. So it's great for AI. It's great for data lakes and large amounts of data, big data, so to speak. Well, let's look at all these other changes. Data's on the balance sheet. Yeah, that's coming. Uh, all the rules for data being on the balance sheet, it's already here. It's an internally created asset with a corresponding cost for acquiring or building. There's a depreciation cycle and it's utilized in a similar manner, uh, broadly speaking, across companies. So that will impose new requirements on us. And by the way, all of these that, that lend themselves to an industry, these are all billion dollar industries that are around this slide here. Edge computing and edge AI. Yes, IoT is really driving AI. We're, getting, we're doing more at the edge, spreading the processing around. Sensor-based data sources are expanding tremendously. Time series is a very important data model. We're seeing, we're seeing an explosion in that. Companies will operate with millions of key variables updated with each new data point. So the need to store data may be reduced. Not now, not really in the actionable future. So I'm not saying prepare to purge data yet, but uh, that day will come and that will represent a lot of change. Using more shared data, using more summaries of data, 
that we glean off of new pieces of in information. And I think the vector databases are a step in that direction. I know they're creating a lot more data, but uh, they are summarizing that data in a series of bits that's very interesting. Auto-generated pipelines based on global experiences, joins by data and context, uh, AI will trounce uh, BI uh, eventually. So all the things on the right here, automated data discovery, uh, yeah, the majority of data jobs will be automated. And that brings up a point about organizational change management. That's a huge issue here, which we will try to address today. And, and that is all the fear that's out there about artificial intelligence, all the misconceptions and so on. So there's a lot more change coming, uh, a lot of work for uh, great technologists to be doing for organizations. And uh, I just want to impress that AI is not the only thing here. So this organizational change management, if you haven't been doing it, now's the time. Now's the time. These are use cases for AI in 2024. Uh, what we're seeing starting to hit the planning stages for next year's budgets out there with our clients and more in all of these industries in the public sector, oil and gas and so on. I'm not going to read them all. Maybe you can find your way. Uh, into this slide in uh, your industry or some related industry. But do note that these use cases are both on the defense, you know, uh, preventing uh, for for a football analogy here, they're they're on the defense. they're they're trying to protect the end zone. They're doing fraud detection. They're trying to make sure everybody is safe and doing cybersecurity. There's a lot of use cases for that. but there's also offensive use cases where we're, we're trying to do like traffic flow management and, and, and pipeline modeling. Where should we put the pipeline, et cetera, et cetera. So these are all things that are part of our business today, but they're just going to be exponentially improved uh, if we successfully uptake AI. And to sum it up uh, and to put a, put a note out there for you in terms of change coming, we are at the start now, really, of general AI. What's general AI? That's where the machine has the capacity to understand or learn any intellectual task that a human being can. Yeah, that you and I can. Any task. We've opened up that new chapter. The most striking feature of this today is its generality, meaning the more general use cases you can give AI and it can be successful with. It's, you don't have to ask it what's two plus three. You can ask it much broader questions all the way to eventually the point of uh, what should I do for my company today? And I being the CEO uh, and taking in all that information. So only a few years ago, neural networks were built with functions tuned to a specific task, such as translation or question and answering. And data sets were curated to reflect that. AI is starting to have no task specific functions and needing no special data set. So we will adapt sooner or later. We will adapt to large language models, just like we have adapted to other technology. But we're the ones that are going to be changed. We're going to be changed in the process. And that change is going to be more than what we've experienced in our careers to date. So unless your process that you're building is 100% automated, you need, to, you need to team to buy into it or you're dead on arrival. And who you need to influence, how you need to influence them, and the reasons why there is the resistance are very numerous. Now, a lot of it comes back to work, jobs, all right? Uh, I am very uh, much out there uh, documented on the destruction side of, of jobs. Uh, with AI. I'm not advocating it. I am saying that I do believe that there is going to be a lot of destructions. It hasn't happened yet. Has not happened yet. Um, so AI can, can certainly do a lot of great things. It is going to transform society. And I believe that the need for work will be less. And that sounds like a good thing on the face of it. But if we don't take care of the people that are not doing the work that is not going to be there in an appropriate way, there's going to be a lot of pain uh, throughout society. And there are, we all know, right, that there are administrative, clerical, sales, retail, transportation and manufacturing jobs that are being automated with AI. 
and maybe we'll get to some form of universal basic income. But I don't want to blow this presentation up today too much. I, I, I have another presentation on uh, the future, uh, which I gave earlier this year in this series, which you can find where I talk all about that stuff. But if your project is not losing jobs, then your organizational change management is going to be a lot easier. And near term, I have not, again, near term, I have not seen that these projects that are being planned are being planned around job loss. There used to be a joke. I, I've been in consulting now. This is my 25th year in consulting. And there used to be a joke that, oh, yeah, we're going to we're going to uh, spec this project and, and they're going to be able to lay off a bunch of people. And that's where they're going to save money. And I was always the voice of saying, no, that won't happen. And it never did. I mean, I don't think it ever did with my projects. And I'm not trying to, you know, brag or anything like that. I know it's, it's happened, but um, it hasn't been a lot. Um, and I am much better talking to someone one-on-one -on -one about how they can prepare themselves individually for this AI future, how they can uh, re revamp their job skills and be much more marketable in this market. But now today we're talking about organizational change management. It's going to be harder. It's especially going to be harder if your if your project again is intending to uh, go with this trend of needing to work less in the organization. If you're talking to someone that uh, is going to uh, lose their job uh, as a result of AI, haven't been there yet, so can't say too much about that, but I, I would think that a company wants to be transparent about that, wants to offer severance, transition, be respectful, and be fair about it. Uh, but for those that remain, uh, let's make sure that they're on board with the project. And by the way, I have no problem with somebody's job changing as a result of AI or any technology. That's normal. That will happen. So let's make sure we're skilled up. And I think what's going to happen more than job loss is going to be like what we see here from IBM. This is was earlier this year, right? They um, paused hiring for the jobs that AI can do. Didn't, didn't lay off, but paused hiring for the jobs that AI can do. We're going to see more of that. But AI is here, and it is our responsibility to get ahead of it. We are paid for what the customer is willing to pay us for. And in the absence of information, some people will go to worst case scenarios. Uh, and I think a lot of people will are going to worst case scenarios. But it's kind of like the horse and buggy to me. We we don't we don't use horse and buggy for tra for transportation for our business. And it's really similar. If you're not using AI, you are essentially using the horse and buggy. And, and we know we can't do that. We know businesses will not do that. And I'm not speaking in terms of what businesses should do for society and their people, speaking more as a scientist in terms of what is, what will be. Now, you may already have some AI. Uh, I mean, you probably do with virtual assistants, automated data processing tools, and even call transcription software and perhaps customer relationship management, underwriting and fraud detection as appropriate, uh, managing security intrusions, automated processing or talent development, on and on. It's slowly but surely and sometimes not so slowly creeping in. And it does represent big change, big change. Organizations implementing AI have recognized the need to make significant changes. And people instinctively don't like change to begin with. So there is a conundrum right there. And that's what we're going to try to uh, minimize within our organizations. When you add AI, it's going to make the issue even worse if you don't get ahead of it. So demonstrate how it can help the company instead of letting the fear grow. So let's be proactive about it. In order to enable cross-functional collaboration that's required, provide a more robust and up-to-date IT infrastructure and manage new risks that can jeopardize the trust in AI. So why is there resistance? Where is it coming from? It's coming from these things. And everybody's going to be a little bit different. Change, period. Change drives some people crazy. It drives all of us crazy at some level, right? But some people, uh, you don't want to move their flower pot. And uh, that kind of change, yeah, that's a big part of the resistance. ROI concerns. Is this really going to drive ROI for the business? Or is it a sinkhole for a bunch of money? Is it just a trend? Now, some of these some of these things I'm mentioning here are, are uh, overreactions, and some of them are underreactions. 
And yes, AI will drive ROI if done right. Um, and, and you know the change part, that's maybe an overreaction. Credibility, is the technology credible? The terminology, I don't understand it. I can't go along with it. Nobody's teaching me. Uh, organization and governance. Are we doing this uh, correctly to business goals overall? Or is that department over there kind of running rogue with AI and who knows what's going to happen? Or is it aligned with the values of this company? Surely we have values. How is AI aligned with that? That's a really good topic to get ahead of. Focus on process, not on the outcome um, and competencies. I'm sorry. Uh, a focus on process and not the outcome is uh, when you focused on the outcome, the process to get there is more flexible. So focus on the outcome. A lot of people will focus on the process. And that's what I'm trying to say. Uh, competencies. Do I have the competency in this new world? You see, AI driven projects, and I'm going to start talking that way, AI driven projects, because AI is not a project in and of itself, right? It's uh, It's an enabler for the things that we do as a company. It enables automation. It enables the ability to bring in all data to the analysis, all that data we've been leaving behind because it just wasn't that important. Well, now it becomes more important because we can actually process all the data of the company. Our data lakes are blowing up as a result. We're going real time all the time. It's not, not a batch environment anymore. I, I can't remember the last time I, I was spec a pro I spec a project and the 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 requirement was batch. I mean, even when you don't have a a, a an immediate real time requirement, you don't need me to understand that it may get to that. And so we're all specking things in real time now. There's going to be job changes. There's going to be new roles, more and different technology. Oh yeah, we're we're going to usher in a new wave of technology uh, as a result of AI. There's going to be some new players. There's going to be some big players that get it and move with it and some big players that don't and fall by the wayside. This may be the death knell for some, some big tech companies out there. And it's artificial intelligence, and that brings some baggage, right? Artificial sounds not real. And I've, I've actually had this conversation with a, uh, a business person in uh, an organization that we were, we were specking an AI project. Uh, it's artificial. It's not real. How can I trust it? And that sort of thing. So yeah, you're, you're going to have all, if you're a champion of AI, you're going to have all kinds of conversations. If you do OCM, be patient, be patient with these people, understand where they're coming from. They know things you don't, maybe they can, you know, they, they definitely know things I, I don't. And I, I love to learn from them and, and them from me. That's how I look at it. AI driven projects require organizational transformation more than just the right data and a good database and good technology. A whole lot more to it now. The architectures are getting more complicated, not less. It's probably going to stay that way for a few more years until we see some, some great frameworks uh, take over for AI. And there's a lot of lobbying to be that great framework happening now in the vendor community. Keep an eye on that. It presents great opportunities, but also poses significant implementation risks. Uh, the cost of these projects is actually going up. Uh, it, it's, they're, they're, they tend to be higher than non-AI related projects. Uh, I think that will change over time. It should, but uh, currently that's the way it is. Encounter many risks that are people related. Yeah, and that's why we're here. We're talking about those people related risks. So what is organizational change management? It's the people side of change. It's how to facilitate people from the current state to the future state with high technology adoption and usage. It's something that I've been doing for my projects for a long time, but I just see the need today for it to be done for all projects and uh, really out there and adopted. So understanding how your stakeholders are looking at the problem and focusing on the people aspect of that activity. It, it uh, Honestly, it's, it's not my favorite thing to do. It may not be your favorite thing to do, but I gravitate to those things that nobody else wants to do that are required for success. And somebody needs to within the organization. And so uh, I'm happy to be part of success. That's That drives me. Having stakeholders part of the current state analysis and the solution, that's organizational change management. Artificial intelligence requires strong organizational change management. I noticed some people are putting this under 
DevOps, and that's okay. Wherever you classify it, that works. What you don't want is the project to look like the picture in the background where uh, there was a little hill there and we tried to build a train track through there and we just sort of pulled through and it doesn't work. <laughs> People experience a range of emotions during the process of transformational change that range from anxiety, fear, and depression to acceptance and commitment of the changes to come. So uh, one, one uh, quote I hearken back to is, is from Warren Bennis. He said, managers are people who do things right while leaders are people who do the right thing. Yeah, we need leaders. We need to do the right thing, do organizational change management. People risks require attention on AI-driven projects. If the leaders are not aligned with the transformation, departments may feel they have little or no input in the change process, all the things that you see there um, if company leaders believe in the program, they will get involved in championing its implementation. When there is resistance at that level, that's that exacerbates the challenge uh, within the organization for AI to succeed. Remember, it's about driving culture too. Culture eats strategy for breakfast. So you may feel like it's always your project that has to do the extraordinary to get noticed. Well, this gets back to my comment from the prior slide. Um, Yes, yes, change is happening so rapidly that there is no cookie cutter to projects. I will I will come to organizations and they cannot tell me their path to production for what we're doing because it has changed so much. Every project gets to forge a new path to production in addition to bringing in artificial intelligence and doing the predictive maintenance on the airplane or whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish, yeah. There's all that. There's all these things that you may not think that you need to do, but if nobody else is doing them, maybe you're the one. Somebody needs to. And sometimes organizational change management falls into that category. Change readiness and organizational impact assessments can provide insights into the people risks associated with the implementation. So it's not a bad idea to comb through your organization, look at the org chart, et cetera, and kind of figure out who's going to be on board who's not gonna be on board and why. I'm gonna come back to this point in a few minutes. For artificial intelligence, what do we want out of people? Here's what we want. We want them to be happy, okay, but we want them to use the distinct AI advantages, not just keep creeping back to the older ways. We want them to accept that AI is part of the company future, not resistant, but accept that. We want them to think in terms of AI, not just BI, not always BI, not always we're going to use the Tableau, we're going to use the this, we're going to use the that to solve a problem. But think in terms of what is it, what is it you're trying to do? And um, AI just very well may be able to do that better and contribute, contribute how AI algorithms can grow their effectiveness within the organization. AI has always stood on the on the shoulders of, of human intelligence and it will continue to. So people and change. People are all over the board in terms of their readiness for this and their, uh, their, their adoption cycle for this very change. And it's this is true for change, period. All the changes in your life, you, you know, you're going to find yourself somewhere on this range, on the spectrum. You're going to be an early enthusiast of it. You're going to be a visionary. But where a lot of people fall is right around the so-called chasm. There's a lot of work that needs to be done around the chasm in an organization for AI. Once you get studies have shown that once you get people beyond that, you get to, you make them becoming a pragmatist. Somebody that's somebody that uh, is being pragmatic about it, is accepting AI, is trying to do some of the things I had on my prior side, thinking about it, uh, uh, trying to think about it in terms of replacing some of the BI we're doing, etc. And then you can kind of get them on the path. But uh, there are stages of change that people will go through as they work their way to being a complete uh, a supporter. And these are professional stages. It's kind of like the personal stages, which you may have seen that start with grief and denial, anger, depression, bargaining, you know, you know that one that we all go through for a lot of things, right? People will go through these things for business change, pre-contemplation, failing to recognize the need for change. Everything's fine, right? 
Contemplation, seriously considering it. Preparation, making small changes, that's a great sign to see. You see some little acceptances going on. And finally, direct action towards the goal, some real thinking, some real contribution. Education is the key to all of this. It's the key to organizational change management. We should educate in many ways early and often and dispel the misconceptions. And this includes everyone. Focus on explaining why the change is being made instead of emphasizing the technology. Make it a shared process. Get people involved. These are the misconceptions that people have about AI, that the change is going to happen over. Now, again, some of these are fears. Some of these are irresponsible. Some of these are under underestimating uh, what AI can do, like the last few here, right? AI is just another gimmick. No, it's not. AI is too expensive. No, it's not. Things are expensive, right? Uh, AI is too complex. We'll figure it out. AI is not reliable. It's reliable enough to do many things, right? And it's not ready to take over the world or any of that stuff, by the way, right now. Uh, AI maturity, a little maturity cycle for you here. You got tactical tools to automate and save time and money. That's where a lot of people are today. And all the way to creating autonomous agents. Yeah, that's running the running of the business with just the data. Wow. Organizational change management for AI projects. Let's get into some of the tactics now. I definitely always want to leave you with things to do, action items, the things that you can do today towards the, the end. Um, AI is definitely the next tech hype cycle. I'll give it that. And everyone's kind of glomming onto this because tech really needs a savior right now. Cloud is there. Cloud is a savior. Yes. Is it enough? Well, look at mobile, cloud, social, big data. They, these were all hits, but we've had some misses too in terms of hype cycles. Web3, whatever that was, crypto and VR working their way, but didn't quite, uh, didn't quite land the way some expectations were about that. I still give it some time though. But how much of this organizational change man management that I'm about to give you, do you need to do? Well, give yourself, make yourself a little spider graph like I have here. And these are the big questions. And I think you'll find with a lot of AI-driven projects that the, 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 the spider is almost out to the edge all the way around. Will business process change? Almost certainly. High number of stakeholders with the potential to be unsupportive? Maybe, maybe not, but likely. How widespread are organizational implications? Mm. Some of the things that we're doing with AI, pretty widespread. Are jobs changing? Yeah, jobs are changing. Is the organization not used to change? Well, maybe, maybe not. How's your organization been uh, recently with changes that it's done outside of AI? Bring that to bear on this. So I'm going to give you three big things to do. And again, education is the key. These all kind of fall under that umbrella of education. The first is stakeholder management. This is at an individual level. Who's on board? Who's not? Sometimes people ask, uh, well, how many stakeholders can we manage this way, almost individually? Well, I'd say about 25. Uh, and then we get into some of the other ways that, that, that we manage people. But some of the desired results here are business leaders and staff support the changes. One question I like to ask is, what do you not like about your job? And why do I ask that question? Because that question is typical of what AI is addressing today. A lot of the things that people don't like about their job, the, the things that, that um, just sort of kill time and replace that fear with positivity, gain respect by listening, stakeholder management, process activities, focus on identifying the stakeholders, assessing the stakeholders, and then influencing the stakeholders in the way that is appropriate for them. Now, everybody's going to get the broad communications that I'm going to get to. But these are individuals that are really key to the success of the project. And I've been on projects, maybe you have as well, where one out of the 25 people cannot be on board with it and the project sinks. And that's a shame. So let's make sure that these key stakeholders, whether they're 25 or five or 35, that they are, we, we get them on board very individually. And these are some of the dimensions that we want to analyze them by today as we step into our project. How do they prefer communications? 
And uh, we've just added a new wrinkle in the past year or two, haven't we? When we're mostly working from home or a lot of us are working from home, right? So that removes some preferences and it adds some others. So keep that in mind. What are the key issues? Where are they currently with this project? If you were to have to wager a guess. Now we're doing this in our war room, right? This isn't something that we're uh, we're out in the uh, you know the main lobby uh, putting on the whiteboard, right? We're doing this in our war room. We're evaluating these 25 or whatever number of people and are they red, yellow, green on this project? Uh, red being stop, yellow in the middle and G for green, which is go, right? Um, what is their, what is the desired status? Obviously it's at least yellow for these top stakeholders. Green is really the, the desired status though, but how do we move them up? Well, we'll talk a little bit about that. What is the, what, what do we desire them to do for the project? What is their role? What are the actions? What are the messages that lead to those actions? What's our action plan for that person? And sometimes, sometimes I will assign uh, team members with the appropriate skills to buddy up <laughs> with uh, these stakeholders and make sure that they touch them, uh, you know what I mean, uh, mm -hmm. at least once a week with messaging about the project that we want them to have. And by inundating them with, with our message, uh, they, can, they, they, they have to relent to it, right? Well, maybe, maybe not, but at least it helps. And let's not forget our early adopters. We, we focus so much on those people that are on board, day, uh, that are not on board, excuse me. But the early adopters, we gotta take care of them too. We have to continuously solicit their feedback. Don't take them, take them for granted. Without communication and progress, enthusiasm can lead to frustration. Spread the decision-making around to them. Make them valuable for being early adopters. Make them stay in the green zone. Now, we're also going to give the organization some broad communications to build organizational awareness and commitment to process and technology changes. This addresses the big changes. Our desired results are a total company commitment and support to implement the change vision. This addresses the big changes, the key objectives, desired results, and alignment. These are outcome-based communications. We want people to think this way. I am connected to people on the AI journey with me. I'm not alone. There are others at my place with AI that we have forums, we have ways to get together. We're on the same page and we're growing together with this thing. So it is important to connect people, which is harder now that a lot of us are working from home, but still ne necessary. My leaders have a shared vision for AI. We want them to know what that vision is. I think there's enough there with AI that it should get the executive board's uh, attention. And the executive board should be starting to create visions for the company in regards to this set of technology called AI. And it's that important. There is a roadmap of implementation. We see the projects coming up that are going to use AI. We know why. Uh, we're comfortable with that. And I can leverage AI. I can help the company with AI. Wow, that is that is the goal right there. I love it when my users, uh, the people in the business otherwise, are coming up with ideas to leverage AI. Now, this is a big topic that I do not have time to explore in depth, AI ethics. But I can tell you that it's a good thing for organizational change management, for people to know that we're approaching AI ethically. And it's, 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 it's the right thing to do too, by the way, of course, right? Responsible data collection, responsible development, ensuring trustworthiness, having explainability there, uh, eliminating discrimination. We know that's a, a creeping problem with uh, the data that we're using for training AI models. And there are things we can do about that. We want to be doing them. We want to be making sure people know we're doing them and that we're doing all these things right here, privacy as well, all these things. So maybe this is a topic for next year. I don't know. But AI ethics helps your organizational change management. The other thing that helps is organizational training. Remember, I said education is the key. It's the key across the board. 
one, two, and three are all about education. Three is about it, right? Organizational training. Training. Train the effective company team to use the new business processes and align the roles. So we train, we don't just expect people to know just because. We train them on the key objectives, the desired results, and how they align with the company. Now the, the team becomes equipped with the knowledge, skills, and competencies necessary. Now, one thing I used to do for my projects as I used to hold brown bags and now I'm kind of dating myself because I don't know if this is still a concept anymore in companies now that everybody is uh, is remote. But I know that some uh, some companies are still uh, doing forums like this, and I applaud that. That's great. And AI certainly lends itself to doing something like that, where bring your lunch. We're just going to talk about AI outside the context of this or that application. But uh, let me help let me help uh, share some information that you need to know. Uh, about AI, and that alleviates some of the uh, frustration and concern concerns. So where does all this OCM come from? I've given you three key things to do now. Is it embedded in a project or is it centralized? So there's no one big right answer here, it just needs to get done. Uh, I'll give you a recommendation here in a minute, but let me make sure you understand. Embedded in a project to support that project, it's focused on the project. There is a tendency with those situations to neglect OCM because there seem to be more pressing issues in regards to the project, right? Getting it all done, getting it to production in time, making sure that it works, all this and that, right? Of course, but I say OCM, we don't go to production without it. And, uh, and OCM is just as important as those things. So, or you can do a centralized SWAT team like we do for uh, the PMOs. Many, in many organizations, like we do for security in many organizations. So they support multiple projects. They will be loaned to a project or two or three at a time, but they will be making sure that organizational change management happens. As a consultant, usually working on a project, um, <laughs> that's not something that uh, that is great for me from that perspective, but I do believe it's great for the company. So I do like that to for, for some OCM. So I think the real right answer is to mainly orient it to projects, but also have executive or centralized, or maybe part of data governance SWAT teams that make sure that the organization knows how to do OCM. You cannot, you cannot just tomorrow say, hey everybody, now let's start doing OCM as part of our projects and walk away. It won't happen. You have to carry that water to the projects, make sure they understand what it really means, and uh, maybe even adopt it for the project, right? And you need some help for that. It doesn't all come from the project team. The project team does the last mile for sure, but I think the centralized team can be very effective there. So to sum it up, these are some of the suggested work products. Now, some of these are going to be program specific. Some of them are going to be release and project specific, and some will be both, okay? That's up to you. But stakeholder management, analyzing the stakeholders, coming up with a number, I threw out 25, whatever it may be. Stakeholder management plan, how are we gonna manage them? What are the impacted job roles? And what are the job changes that are coming? The sooner you know this, the better. The sooner you know it and, and you act on it, uh, people don't feel like they're getting hit with an anvil in their face with the project when it quote unquote goes to production, right? Give them a job transition plan from, from A to B, from where they are now to where they need to be. And then second one was broader communications. How are we going to broadly communicate this? And there are many cultural ways which you can do this poster in the lobby, poster on the internet or, you know, posting on the internet site, uh, the executives say it in the all hands, you know, it's part of this or that logo, what, what have you. Make it important. Make it that important. And then we have organizational training. Who needs training? Develop the curriculum, the materials, do the delivery and evaluate your effectiveness of that training. So in conclusion, AI is here and it represents big change. OCM is essential to organizational transformation to AI. Choose the applicable work products. Gave you some. Education is the key. Don't push it off to the end. 
insert the work projects into the plans, put them in your backlog so they get pulled off and actioned in your sprints. Focus on stakeholder management, broad communications, and organizational changing, making that soft or seem soft, making it hard, making it a real tangible part of an action-oriented framework. AI-powered products can and will continue to provide a significant competitive business advantage for enterprises. Investing in AI can put a company steps ahead of the competition, but in order to fully realize the productivity and efficiency gains that AI promises, all users and stakeholders need to be on board with the changes. If the leaders implement effective organizational change management, they will see the benefits of AI throughout the entire enterprise with little resistance and great reward. But remember, even if you do all this OCM, it looks like this, your plan and reality. As long as it's trending upwards, I'm okay. I'm, I'm happy with that. I know projects have bad days, bad weeks maybe, um, but we just want the trajectory moving upwards towards the end game. And uh, that, if that is if that is you, you have to be happy with that. Know that that's reality, especially in these new areas that you're breaking into AI. But you can do it. Uh, just bring organizational change management along for that ride. Now, that has been the formal part of my presentation. I turn it back over to Shannon for your questions. William, thank you so much. If you have questions for William or Preetam, feel free to submit them in the Q&A and just answer the most commonly asked questions. I will be sending a follow-up email by end of day Monday with links to the slides and recording from today. So diving in here, a couple questions, Preetam, for you that came in. Um, this Informatica data management uh, uh, integration and quality, et cetera, use AI to prepare data for AI? Yeah, so that's a great question. Uh, so we have our Clare engine, which I showed uh, uh, in my presentation. This is our AI powered Merida engine, uh, which drives a lot of our uh, automations in, in data integration, uh, not in data quality, but in data integration, definitely in building your pipelines, gives recommendations, also in our catalog uh, uh, as well. And very soon we will be launching the Clear GPT, which is in private preview. That will that the Clear Copilot stuff, which I was talking about, that will be the next level where we are infusing some of the APIs of uh, uh, of, of of the Clear GPT, the LLM stuffs uh, into our data management tool, uh, which can really really simplify the overall data management across. So, but it's still work in progress. Okay, so keep uh, it. Uh, so keep an eye, okay, we'll keep posting more stuff spotted actually in the future. Perfect, and one more quick question for you here. Does Informatica offer a data observability tool? Uh, we have data observability uh, in, in IDMC uh, for each of our services, uh, for data quality, uh, for our data integration, for our data ingestion, where you can monitor your data uh, data pipelines, uh, uh, if there are any failures that is happening, you can take remedial action out here. So yes, we do have, uh, but it is across different services out here right now. All right, thank you. And any examples, um, so William, any examples out there of organizations that have implemented great OCM for their AI projects? Oh yeah, there's plenty. I don't. I don't know that any have given me permission to use their names. Um, I think of some of my clients, uh, uh, like a big oil and gas uh, company that basically did what I just talked about uh, under a little bit of my guidance. So I know that they did and what they did, and um, they are exploring uh, uh, fields for pipeline development. And this sort of thing, some of the science is a little beyond me, uh, but I know enough to help them in ways of building out their the data layer for the AI that they are doing. And uh, it's going to affect a lot of, it, it is already affecting a lot of people's jobs. Again, nobody's losing their job, but uh, people's jobs are changing. And it was, uh, as looking back, now that we're two thirds of the way through the project. Now, as we look back, uh, I can see where the OCM that we did early and often uh, really paid off because we're not getting the resistance that we very well could have got 
uh, from the uh, business community and and from uh, all the workers, really, as well. So they were touched as well in this process. Um, everybody was, really. And it definitely is paying off. And I have other examples of that, um, where at different levels, uh, the o OCM process that I talked about was implemented uh, always to, to success, meaning uh, it paid off. Perfect. Hey, Tim, anything you want to add to that? Uh, no, I mean, uh, I mean, he, uh, William has covered it pretty well, actually. Okay. Uh, uh, I think I can, I can say from, uh, from a data management perspective, my narrative was that we always talk about like, you need to have solid data foundation, which I showed, okay. Uh, high quality trusted data for driving AI, but AI is also equally important to in, in driving your data management or data engineering initiatives. Uh, so, so that is something which, uh, which, uh, which organization should keep in mind uh, because if you are not infusing AI, which means you are doing the same uh, manual jobs, manual hand coding, uh, which takes a lot of time and you'll not be able to scale your, uh, your data pipelines, which can impact your overall analytics and AI initiatives. Great. We've got uh, just about four minutes left. I'm going to slip in as many questions as I can here. Do you make a distinction between AI and specialized program systems? I think some of the functions you've mentioned were more programmed, quote unquote. Hmm. Uh, hmm. Uh, I haven't heard that phrase, specialized program decisions, if I even got that right. Uh, I will say that a lot of the OCM that I talked about here applies to all kinds of projects. Um, and it's it's something that I've been doing again for a couple dozen years uh, in one way, shape or form, and it's evolved. And uh, it's as simple as it can be and still while still being effective. I've had it more complicated. Uh, if you look back, me teaching this a uh, few even a few years ago, I, I didn't give you three work, three work product categories I gave. I think I had a, like eight. It was too much. And, and we had to simplify to see more uptake. And so that's what we've done. That's where we are. And yes, this applies to all sorts of things. So if you're not doing AI, uh, but you're doing something that impacts the company and its people, you still should adopt OCM. Perfect. And Preetan, feel free to jump in on any of these questions as well, if you have anything additional to, to add to them. Yeah, sure. Yeah, no, I think William covered it pretty well. Okay. Um, and so I'm going to slip in at least one more question here. Earlier, you stated, excuse me, that AI. Excuse me, earlier, you stated that AI uh, explainability would will not be needed. How do you reconcile this for AI explainability as part of ethical AI? Yeah, well, uh, here's the thing about explainability, at least in my view, um, I, I see a I see a, a pedal to the metal. Uh, kind of approach to AI. I see that the U.S. is uh, competing with China uh, very hard uh, in this area. And um, I see that um, as a result of that level of competition, or at least I'll put it this way, at least that is what is cited a lot by uh, companies uh, as, as, a, as a reason uh, for uh, pedal to the metal AI. Um, and I think that that is, that is pushing uh any kind of boundaries to the side now we did see just yesterday there was some activity i believe in congress uh, uh on this issue of guardrails around ai we'll see where that goes um, but i personally don't think it'll there'll be very much uh come out of that and, and that very much will uh end up uh being needed to be explained now explain is a a, a squishy word right uh, explainability to the level of what we usually talk about in terms of AI explainability, that's pretty deep if you're able to explain it um, in terms of bits and bytes and, and how the algorithm works and all this sort of thing. But explaining it as I put it in context of OCM and as we must put it in context for AI ethics has more to me uh, to do with uh, explaining up to the point of and then the algorithm takes over and it has, you know, it looks at these variables and it makes decisions and so on. Whether, without going way too deep with it. I hope that uh, that explains sort of the reason why I said, I think that the need for 
the explainability that we're talking about today will 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 not be there uh, at some point in the future. It's just talk now anyway, um, and and I think the competition will uh, will push that push that aside. But internally, in terms of our programs. We need to be explaining things that kind of in general uh, up to the point of the algorithm. Perfect. Well, thank you both so much for these great presentations and commentary, but I'm afraid that is all the time we have scheduled for the webinar. And thanks to all of our attendees for being so engaged in everything we do and joining us today. Just again, a reminder, I will send a follow-up email by end of day Monday for this webinar with links to the slides and links to the recording. And thanks to Informatica for sponsoring today's webinar and help making it happen. Thanks, y'all. Thanks for chatting. Thanks, William. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank